today you are in for a treat because I am bringing you behind the scenes to actually show you guys on exactly what I do on how to open up a bubble tea shop at the biggest marketplace in Vancouver. Hello friends! Now more specifically, how do you open up a bubble tea shop at a farmer's market or at any events place just to test things out because for some of you that don't know I operate two to three different bubble tea shops at the biggest marketplace in Vancouver every single year and now that you know what all the restrictions have passed we just got the call we're opening up again this year uh, and now we only have one week to set the whole thing up and I thought that you know what it'll be really cool to actually show you guys behind the scenes on exactly what I do from going to the city hall to get my business license to figuring out my food safety applications to basically all the equipment that we would need to operate to ordering our inventory um, to hiring people, training people, setting up the whole shop everything we need to accomplish in a week's time and I thought that you know what this would be a really really good video series that I'm gonna create specifically for you so you can not only learn from the theories that I share with you but also actually see us in motion and if this is the type of content that you would want to see more of and this is something that is interesting for you make sure you guys smash the like button because that would show me that hey you know what this is the type of content you would like and I'll shoot more of this for you um, so now without further ado let's dive right in to show you guys some behind the scenes so first and foremost, for you to operate any type of food business, you must have a business license. Now, typically speaking, if you're operating in a farmer's market or at the night market or any types of events, those type of business license are very easy to obtain. All you need to is to fill in your application, pay some money, which is always a, usually around 100 to 200 bucks, something like that and also having the contract with the marketplace to submit at your local city hall and within a week or two you should be able to have your license so then that way you can operate now for those of you who are looking into a physical location where you have your own brick and mortar shop then you do not need a contract all you have to do is once again drop by to your local city hall and they're going to give you the applications to fill in so you can get operating now usually this process is something that I dread a lot because the lineups are ridiculously long but because of the new restriction and everything they actually are closed to the public. What that means is that I create this, put this in the letter and put it in the drop off box. There we go, we're good to go. So when it comes to operating a bubble tea booth at an event, design and branding is everything and the reason is because when you have hundreds thousands and even tens of thousands of people coming through your doors and going to these events it is your job to be able to convert the traffic that is coming through into paying customers now how do you do that it is by design because if you're competing and when you're competing amongst tens of others of the same booths down the hallway if your design is not going to be captivating then unfortunately you have not done your job it is not because of anything else so that's the reason why design is everything when you are operating at an event slash farmer's market now what i'm showing you guys is different iterations of our design designing process so then that way you can go through our thought logic so then that way you can create a design that fits for your needs now to first show you initially we wanted to be able to be much more aesthetically and minimalistic looking so this really showcases how that looks like and we just want to go that higher end uh, feeling altogether. Now this proves uh, out not to be that successful unfortunately because people can't really see what we're selling. There's no images here of the product that we're selling and on top of that it just blends into the background and that's the reason why when we were operating with this banner it wasn't effective at all and that's the reason why we improved. We changed the branding <clears throat> and we also made it a lot more um, we, we also added a lot of uh, more images of real products that really showcase what people are buying, which is the bubble teas. And this turned out to be much better as an alternative. And we also went on to create something that looks like this as another alternative um, that we created 
finally coming to our final version, which was this. This was our final version. We really liked it because not only is it colorful, but also really showcasing our product that people are seeing. So imagine this being at the top of your banner, at, at the top of your booth. So when people are walking through, the colors grab their attention and automatically, without them thinking, without them reading, they know exactly what you're selling, which is bubble tea right here and then you can see everything. So that's the reason why having branding that is much more practical versus aesthetic is important when you're designing for a farmer's market or an event place. Now, I wanna share with you guys a little bit more about the, the menu engineering process that went into this, so then that way you can understand why we did what we did. First of all, we put in our biggest profit generating items. It was, this is the biggest profit generating item, mainly because we're only selling syrup, which is the green tea syrup, and also mixing that with green tea in order for us to make this drink. And this drink makes us around 10 times the margin. So we sell this drink for around, I would say, five to six dollars usually and the cost of making this is around 30 to 40 cents so the margins on this item is huge guys and that's the reason why we highlight this here because this would allow people to actually order it because they see the image like, you know what this looks great let's order that and there is our profit generating item and also these three items are, are our top sales taro milk tea and mango and because these are our top sales what do we do we usually pre-make pre batches of these guys available that we can just pour into the cup and we can serve it. And that's how we can serve hundreds of drinks every single hour. So we're talking about one to two drinks every single minute. That's a very high pace. And we need to make sure we optimize for efficiency, especially working in a farmer's market or events place because the more people you can go through, the more money you're gonna be able to make. And that's why we highlight all these as our top picks in a very strategic manner. And this is also a really high profit generating item. On top of that, it is super easy to make. We just put the brown sugar pearls in there, add it with milk and voila, the drink is done. That's the reason why how we created this menu like this. Now, I'm not sure if you guys noticed, out of this menu, I do not include pricing on this menu that is on the top banner. And the reason for that is because our pricing can change de depending on the weeks, depending on the different season and depending on the years that we operate as well. For example, this year, the prices would be 550 or this year uh, we increased it to $6. But however, the following year, it could be 650 depending on the cost of the item. And that's the reason why we do not want to fixate the prices just on this menu because we want to reuse this menu in the future. That's the reason why. And on top of that, as we run promotions, as we enter more of the seasons that don't have as much traffic, we want to become even more competitive. And that's the reason why during those times, we would actually decrease our drinks price so then that way it becomes more attractive and we would capture more market share for you guys look at this to see how you can craft your menu whether it's branding whether it's aesthetics whether it's practicality or pricing this is super effective and useful when creating your own bubble tea shop thank you simon yeah i'll bring you out i'll bring you out how much more syrup can you have I think that's the last thing. No, there's no more. There's like two flavors here. So as you can see here, guys, the storage is finally done. As we can see, the straws are here. We label everything. Our syrup is down here. Syrup and then a bunch of powder drinks, milk powder, um, and then cups. Mango puree, pearls, coconut jelly, cups, and then pearls, 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 pearls. The reason why we actually have to make this and make sure that we label everything, as you can see, is because we have tons of staff coming in and out all the time. And if we do not make this systemized and if we do not make it easy 
for different people to come in and grab their stuff then they're gonna spend like half an hour to an hour trying to look for stuff digging through all these boxes if we're not organized so if you guys are having your own operations make sure that things are optimized so then that way anyone can come into your warehouse and flop into these systems of yours and to make this a smooth sailing operation So let me bring you behind the scenes and show you guys the inside operation of what it actually looks like and how the workflow actually happens. So right here is where we take all the orders, we take the money, after we get it, we take the cup and then we put it either in the back here, which is our slushy station, this is where we cook the pearls, and then we have the real drink station, which is right here. Tea, red tea, green tea, jugs, powder, syrup, hot water tank right there. After we make it, then we're gonna put it right here to make sure that we put all the drinks here, label them properly, put on the lids, and now this is where we serve the drinks to our customers. And the reason why we put this here, we built this thing that actually houses a lot of different drinks because sometimes when it gets really busy, we have 10, 20 drinks just lying here, laying here because no one is coming to redeem them. So what a lot of people do is they actually order your drink, they go walk around and then they come and get it. So that's the reason why we built this little hut right here to put the interim drinks right here so then that way when people come we can actually serve it to them right here now when it comes to operation one thing that we must be super aware of is that if anything goes wrong it is our fault if someone doesn't have common sense or if people don't know how to create a drink or if they do not know the pricing of their items it's not because of their lack of training it is not because of them not having common sense it is because of us as owners and as operators that we didn't provide the training necessary for them to have these equipment on time they need to have the tools we need to empower them to have the tools it doesn't matter if you're operating a restaurant or as small of an operation as a farmer's market or at any event place you must have policy handbooks tools to help them out and that has proven to be a very very successful um, resource for us to train the rest of the staff that we have that's a reason how we can have two to three different operations at the same time while we operate and handle with more than a hundred staff doesn't change when we're operating a bubble tea booth as well so as you can see here we list out the responsibility specific responsibilities of each of our positions from a floater to a cashier, to a barista, exactly what they're responsible for so there is no ambiguity. So they know exactly what is expected of them. Support role, and this is key, guys, when it comes down to operating your booth as well. If you're not clear on what the expectations are, how do you expect the people working for you to know what they're supposed to do? We also label the different items and what we name them. And once again, a lot of things that we take for granted shouldn't be taken for granted for people who are new to the trade. We identify the different tools, the different equipment that we use, and also we share with them how do we make and how do they make our products. We separate it into three different series, milk tea series, tea flavor series, and also slush flavor series. So each one of them has their own recipe, which we show them and we teach them how to make it. And then on top of that, what do we do for the cashiers? We share with them how should they be writing codes on the cup. So then that way, the people that are holding onto the cup, when they read this, these code become something that they know what people are ordering. So for example, if someone ordered a passion fruit green tea, then the code would be PF GT. If someone ordered a strawberry green tea, it would be STR GT. As simple as that. And we go with uh, even uh, some of the customization, easy ice, easy ice, the sweetness level, maybe half sweet, something along the lines of that. So nothing goes to ambiguity. We also list down the different prices. So then that way they know exactly what to do. We teach them how do they do cup labeling. So for example, milk tea plus pearls, milk tea plus pearls, half sweet, 
half sweet. Something along the lines of this allows us to not have any ambiguity and allows the whole team to be on the same page. Not only this, we also have a recipe page that makes it super easy for them to remember because at the end of the day, when they are looking at such a big operations and all these manuals, it's easy to forget. So we took it one step further to make it super big. We print it out and we leave it right on their desk so they can use this as a cheat sheet. And on top of that, we also created a checklist of before they operate, what should they be doing? Exactly the steps that we expect them to perform. So then that way, once again, nothing is left for any ambiguity and they can be able to be set up for success. That's the detail that we as operators needs to have. So when it comes down to it, their success becomes our success. There is a saying out there that the last 10% of any project requires 80% of the effort. And that is so, so true because when you are coming to a final closure, final point, final sprint line, there are still a ton of things that you need to prepare for in order for you to be ready, in order for you to not scramble on game times. And that's the reason why after and aside from the on-site setup, there are still a ton of things for us to do in the back office. And as you can see here, we still need to hire a bunch of staff. I need to make sure that on the day of operations, I prepared the game floats, sorry, the, the bank floats. And then also we need to tag the fire extinguishers. So then that way, when the fire marshals come, they can actually check our fire extinguisher and it is working properly. I also need to build a tabletop for our counter that's over the sneeze guard because one of our tables is a little bit too short and it's not supporting well enough. Therefore, I need to build it up and then attach a banner on top to make the branding look nice and make everything look beautiful as well. <clears throat> so that's something that I need to do. Uh, I need to buy some uh, containers for our drink powders, and then also I need to make sure that I find my sealers and my sugar dispenser. I can't find it anywhere in the warehouse. That's why I need to make sure I find it. I need to buy a bunch of buckets and zip ties to make sure that, oh, by the way, if you guys are operating at a farmer's market or an, at, an, at any event, zip ties are your best friends. It's basically the duct tape of anything. So it just helps so much with uh, attaching power cables, lights, everything. Zip ties are a must. Uh, food safety, I still need to talk to the food safety officials to make sure that we are approved with our food safety application. I need to prepare the contracts for my staff as well. I need to make sure that I prepare the recipe booklet so then that way when the staff comes on site, they have something to reference back to on how do they make the drinks. That is very, very important. Along with the food safety, I also need to make sure I print it to be on site because if you do not print it, and if it is not on site on the day of operation, they're not gonna give you the food safety license for you to operate. And if you don't have that license, you cannot operate, you cannot sell. That's the reason why it is so important for you to prepare everything in advance. That is key, guys. The more you can prepare, the more you are aware of the different items that you need, the more and smoothly everything will go on the day of business license, we need to get that, the uh, paper, with this is basically our uh, paper towels and also our garbage bags. And these are the things that I need specifically for our operations that I still need to do behind the scenes. So guys, just because you set up on the day of doesn't mean you're off the hook. You still need to figure out all the different aspects that you may not be as prepared as you thought you were to ensure a smooth operations. <laughs> wrapping up, showing you guys behind the scenes on how do you set up a bubble tea operation at an event. In total, this whole setup cost us around five hours with four staff. So 20 hours in total. And do not be, do not underestimate this kind of operation as little as this booth may look. We can 
actually sell more than 100 drinks per hour, and that's our max capacity. That means that we turn out more than two bubble teas every single minute, and that's really high efficiency because at the end of the day, when you're operating at a event uh, and at a market, you need to make sure that you are very, very efficient so that that way you can get as much traffic as possible. When people see a big lineup, they might just go to the next booth, which is the reason why your operation must be efficient. So everything you see within our booth and our operation is highly maximized and utilized just so that that way we can actually turn out as much units as possible. And if you guys want to see more about how we are operating during an event night and event day and to see us in action, then definitely smash the like button because that will show me this is the type of content you enjoy and I can make more of that to show you guys because whatever I'm sharing with you guys, um, it's not just theories that I'm sharing with you. It is actually something that I do on a regular basis and it's something that works. So I hope that this can help you within your operations. And if you guys want to learn more about how do you set this thing up, how do you create a restaurant, how do you start a food business online, then definitely check out the free training in the link below because that's where I can share with you from ideation to the menu creation to the actual marketing aspects so that way you can have something that you're proud of, something that you can be happy about. Um, so yeah, definitely check it out in the link below. Make sure you guys smash the like button so I know this is the type of content you enjoy and I can create a sequel just to show you guys the operation in process. Now, see you guys next time.